Okay, this is the third class of the Family Book Creator. Uh, the Family Book Creators were covering the preferences and settings. Uh, for this one, uh, we're going to be covering what I call the five pages, which is the title page, the colophon. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but dedication, the foreword, and the introduction. I call these the five pages because they're all how you use them is basically all the same. We're also going to be covering the table of contents and then the indexes. Um, for the title, colophon dedication, I mean, basically the settings are almost all the same, except for, uh, you notice between colophon and title page, you don't have the option of the header footer for the title page, which kind of makes sense. Uh, but for all five of these, you've got an option whether or not you want these in the document or not. So just because you have them, they're there does not mean you have to include them. See, in this case, I, I'm not in this test book, let the Kennedy, this isn't my tree, so I really don't have a dedication page. So why include it? Um, let's just go across. Uh, one of the most helpful things here is to go into full screen mode, you know, so you're not working with just the teeny tiny screen. Uh, no, just so, you know, we can zoom in and out, you know, if you want to see it. Uh, this funny thing will show hide the, the individual codes in the, uh, in the document. Um, I'll turn that off right now. Um, the nice thing about, uh, this is, this is basically a mini word, a mini word editor. So if you're familiar with using word or any word processor, it's kind of the same, including for. Um, if you've got, say, a document you've already created, you can actually open it in, in, and, uh, and use it. Let me uh, just go over, say, over here to, let's say, the dedication page, which I'm not using. I, I can open up a dedication page, say, uh, for what I did for the halls. Uh, I kind of said how I got started, you know, and then various people that have helped me. This I use the tables, which is up in here. Tell how, how many tables you want, and then you can resize them. Uh, and likewise, then if you do make any changes, you can save you can save it too as a Word document. Um, and you got other formats. You can save it as PDF. I mean, rich text format. So. Uh, and likewise, uh, certain things on it, you know, you can change the font. So well, let's just say this one, I don't want Times New Roman. Let's just say I want this stencil, you know, and you can change the size. I mean, this is all kind of basic uh, stuff you can make it italics and underlined uh you could even change the color if you want you know uh these things no down to you can make bullet points numbers if you're doing that you no know, decrease the indent increase the indent uh You know whether you want it centered, left justified, right justified, or full justified. You know, you've got those options. Uh, can insert a picture. Um, let's see, do I have? No, here's one I found. You know, pictures. You can resize them. You know. Basically, this is standard stuff. That's the table. You can insert, you know, a page break if you want. Or no, that was a text box. So if you want to put text over it, you know, like. Um, family gathering and then. 
you know, put that over on top of that. Line spacing, you know, it's, this is all basically, uh, um, this is all basic word processing stuff, just kind of like a mini stripped down version uh, in symbols here, you can insert uh, page breaks so it doesn't have to stick to one page. And doing stuff like this is also where it's handy to show the be able to show the codes because you wonder, well, why all, why all of a sudden is there a jump, you know, and then um, you can see, well, that's the page break. Or, yeah. Yeah, a section break. So, uh, and I mean, even like columns and stuff. I mean, like I said, this is the basic, uh, ba basic word processing stuff. So, um, likewise, you can undo. Hit the X and you'll exit full screen mode. And like I said, you can save this if that's what you want. Is that, oh yeah, I really botched that, you know. Um, and if there's one other thing you can do, you can always uh, restore the text. So I'll go back to how it was. This is like the default settings for it. Um, uh, this one, if you do change anything, you can force it to save the settings. Um, you can do it. It's, I don't know, me personally, I, I actually had to ask Stefan exactly what that is because to me is really is it needed because if you change anything, well, let me change to, change this back. You know, if you go to another page, you know, you come back and, well, it's what the changes you made are, are still there. If you exit, come back, the settings are automatically saved. Um, the other option here is if you want a header and footer on these pages, you don't have this option with the title. Uh, but you got like an include in section. So then, you know, basically you would have the header and the header and footer. Uh, if you tell it like omit on the section start, the first page would not have the header footer, but subsequent pages would. Uh, so like a dedication or a forward intro, you know, it might be two, three pages. If you uh, have it included section, the header footer will be on that the first page. If you have it omit at section start, it'll start on the page two of it. Um, let me just, because I mean here, I mean, this is just, yeah, see, these are, these are all one page. These don't have a header or footer. Um, but if they did, th they would show up. You don't have the page number and stuff like that. You also have the option, uh, and I did on, uh, on this as to whether or not you want Arabic numerals. That's just the one, two, three. If you want Roman numerals, and then there's continuous or restart at page one. Typically, if you if you ever look at a book, you know the this in the introduction pages are typically like Roman numerals. Um, but then when you get to the main part. You can have it start, go to Arabic and then have it, okay, restart. So at this point, when you start the heading, I want this to be page one. Otherwise, it, uh, if, you, if you just say continuous, uh, it's going to assume page one is going to start right here at the title page. So like if you go here, you know, that's page one, two, three, four, five. Yep, see, there's page number five. No, six, seven, um, you know, eight. 
or nine. So if I if I would have had it reset right here, this would be page one. If I would have told it that. Um, so um, are there any questions about these five pages? Can, if not, I'll go on to the table of contents. Hey John, um, <laughs> in that first page where you have the uh, page sure. width, can you adjust that within the page? Or is that um, set up with the page layout? In other words, on that first page, can you shrink that bar up here to have it a, a smaller uh, column? Oh, 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 oh. Um, yeah, you should be able to. Yeah, it's, uh, I think so. Oh, no. Uh, okay, no. Th these width, this width here, this is specified by your uh, page text layout. and page layout here. Okay. So, so no, that you can't. So you uh, have to use the indent or something, one of the other features. Yeah, no, that I don't think you can. You could probably do that if you want specific tab spots in Word. Um, uh, Charlene and asked, how do you reset uh, for any for any of these five pages? Uh, let me just go to well here. Let me just go to the title page. It's this icon right here. It's this little circle, like counterclockwise. You hover on it. It says restore text, and this will just restore the text to the standard default. Now, another option is like, if you did save your settings, like, okay, I've really played with the settings. Uh, and this we covered uh, in a previous class, we can always, uh, you can save and load the settings. So here I load my Kennedy settings and um, boom, this stuff is all back the way I had it, so. And then likewise, you can save the settings. And these title pages, you can also individually load and save them, load and save them too. So if you've got a book, so like here, I got various dedications, title pages uh, that I've saved, four words that I've saved. And then if I, if I tweak it, I can resave it in here. Or like I said, some of those I just did in Word. Um, John. Yeah. Um, I came in late. I'm sorry. I've, I've got COVID actually, so <laughs> forgive no. me. Um, when you are you doing mostly everything like in your word and then bringing it into the book? I noticed uh, you had. I noticed you had header in that document, but I didn't know whether you pulled it in through the book feature or through your uh, Word document? Well, well, the header and footer and stuff like this, this is all mm -hmm. created with Family Book Creator. Okay. Uh, anything, any Word document you'd bring in on the title dedication, I'm not sure if. Yeah, right there. Did you do that document in Word and bring it in? The, this you had, right here, this is kind of standard stuff here. Okay, because you had default. heading there, and I've never seen heading, you know, in there before. So I thought, well, you must have brought it in yeah. from Word. You must have set that up as a template in Word. Well, this I didn't do in Word at all. Oh, so how did you get the head headers in there like that? Well, th this is a standard. Yeah, and this is something I should cover. This heading here yeah. on introduction, this this just brings in uh, mm -hmm. let's see here. Is this the here, let me just bring back the default Kennedy settings that I did this okay. in. Okay. 
so an introduction, so heading. So let me let's just take a look at this uh, introduction. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, the heading is just the tab. It's introduction because this is the introduction tab. If I did, uh, this is the introduction. If I put heading here on this, they, these are, uh, if I generate this, then this word would, would be replaced with forward. So it's, it's kind of like a keyword thing. Just like it says the following page lists the family members as of then current date. So, you know, yeah, see, I, I generated this book yesterday as of February 8th. Uh, and then the title, titled Headline First Family. So that's going to be this family starting person. Whoops, let's go back here. But I mean, does it, does, I don't know what the, I can't, I'm not thinking real well. Does it? automatically like put that heading in there as a placeholder well th this right here or is, you is basically it, did you this is basically it? the default settings right here and like i said the, these are just kind of like keywords you can use did so it's like because like current yeah. date you don't have to worry about oh i got to change the state like say i'm i'm doing this book now oh i got to change this to say february 9th or 9 february you just say okay just display the current date so you are putting a, this is kind of like a template yes 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 okay and you put those placeholders in the document um and then saved it and then you can use it you know in any other book yes yes yeah the, okay. the, the, these are standards that you know and like i said you can change any of these all okay so you did that all in in word made it look good and then brought it in here and now it's kind of like your little standard template for yeah other than i didn't do this in word at all i could do this in word okay but like, like I said, like for this stuff, I wouldn't bother. Like I said, with the stuff for that dedication where I had the tables and stuff, that I didn't work. That because that was just for me, it was easier than because you okay. have a few more tools and um. So and like I said, this headline first family, you know, that just says okay, that's this family, the starting family. Family of the starting person. So that's the default header for that. And then this uh, says then the offspring or ancestors of family or person. So it's who the person. This was a descendants book. So it's showing, uh, it mentions uh, the ancestors are in the pedigree chart, you know, and the descendants are, you know, these are all placeholders. Okay. So, all right. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, some said I did a draft book direct, directly from Family Tree Maker, not in not using Word anywhere in the book. It, it had spaces in the middle sentences where I didn't want them, but I couldn't delete them. Well, if you did it directly from Word, I'd say go ask that in uh, the Family Tree Maker user group. This is, unless that's how it did it in Family Book Creator. But so, anyway, so we're done with this section. So now we're going to just go on with the table of contents. And this is very simple as whether or not you want those uh included so ba basically you saw the standard uh let me just go up here 
You add to the content. And then without the family headings, see, it's, it just says contents. It doesn't say the, uh, the family, the starting person. Or it says family starting person that just didn't give those names there. And if we tell it that was without including the family headlines, and if we just don't do that at all, then you see there is no contents here at all on the right hand side. So basically, it doesn't display a table of contents at all. So uh, typically, you do do it, but if you don't want a table of contents, you don't have to have a table of contents. Just like I said, you don't have to have a call to phone. You don't have to have a dedication. Uh, so I'm uh, just, so that basically covers this. Now indexes, this is where there's a lot of options. Uh, the bibliography, if you want it to include the bibliography, that's just your list of sources not tied to any one specific fact. Uh, let me just close some of these. You know, you'll have your bibliography right here. You know, it says, okay, the, these were the sources used in this book. But it's not tied to any one specific fact. It's just these are my sources. Uh, if you tell it uh, to include the source repository, that's up in the family tree maker. Uh, you know, if there is a repository listed, then it will list. Uh, this is the only one in this case that had it, you know, for this one was taken from public member trees. Or without the bibliography, you know, it didn't have the repository. So, like I said, that's your choice there. Uh, uh, and now on here, you've, you've also got the option whether or not you don't want an index of places or an index of individuals. Um, Excuse me, John. Yeah. Could you could you please go back to that repository page? Yeah. Okay. Um. How did you um? Can you? I see this thing here that says hearsay. How did you get that word in there? Or is that a different? Is that a different session? What what wording? The I don't... word where it says hearsay below Dalby. That's below... all part of the source. Okay, okay. So you just made a source called hearsay. Oh yeah, that's Hersey. So yeah. Oh, yeah, is that's that a... a name, or is that hearsay? Like you heard it from somebody else. That's you heard from someone else. So, okay. like I said, that's just the source. So, okay. Thank you. No. Uh, now, when you, uh, if you're going to uh, create an index for places, you got the option basically to do a regular sort where it does city, county, state, country, or you can do a reverse sort. Uh, so with a regular sort, you know, it's, you're going to see, you know, Arlington, Virginia, Atlantic Ocean, Boston, Milsa, you know, you'll see it like this. Uh, if you tell it to do a reverse sort, it's going to put the country first. Uh, and the reason why you might want to do that is, you know, here is like stuff here that happened in Massachusetts. It's all together, Barnstable, Will Millisate, Norfolk, uh, Off Martha's Vineyard. These are all grouped together. Like I said, this is a very small book. You know, if you've got a book, hundreds of pages, uh, it's more handy than, uh, you know, on here, you know, uh, Barnstable's Barnes tables here, you know, then, okay, now here we got New York. Oh, now here we're back to Massachusetts. 
you know, here now we're Georgia, Texas. Oh, now here we're back to Massachusetts again. You know, it will keep the places that are together together, basically. Um, that's what the reverse sort will get will give you. And you do have the option of hiding any one given country country, but that's done in Family Tree Maker. Uh, that's under tools options under for Windows or it's under preferences or settings for the Mac versions. You can tell it to hide any one country. And then Family Book Creator would do that. So then this would be filed under Massachusetts, you know, New York. Rather than having, you know, if you've got all of one country or if you do a lot, if you're all in Canada and or Germany, it's like you don't have to see the word Germany everywhere, you know. Um That's what those do. Uh, use you user defined short place names. I covered that in the previous. So rather than using the given names, you can you know also like maybe you you just want Dallas like that that TX. You want to use the two state abbreviations. You if you've got those set up on Family Tree Maker, uh, then uh. then it will honor those you know so like here i in this example i put new york city and why you know so and that like i said you said on the places tab on the main places uh section uh, ba -ba -bum. Uh, geographic coordinates, uh, you'll see some on here, you know, where there's actually GPS coordinates, you know, whether or not you want to include that or not. Uh, and this will also be a thing like here, you know, you'll see this place. Oh, there's no GPS coordinates. Well, that just kind of means this is a custom place. Um, so it basically family tree maker doesn't know exactly where this is on the spot so um but whether or not you want to include the, the, those coordinates that's up to you um yeah here i did do one where i hid the usa and like i said this one here you'll see usa start come up but if you notice there's new G gps coordinates because this was not resolved so this isn't in the hierarchy, so that's why the USA showed up. Um, page numbers with hyperlinks. Uh, what that does is when, uh, like, see right here, if I hover uh, my mouse on this, ba basically it does nothing. If I've got the uh, hyperlinks now with the places, so say, oh, hey, I want to go to this person. See, now it changes to that. Uh, click it and it takes me right to, you know, page 10 where, where here's the Dallas, Texas setting. Uh, that's where that place is, you, is referenced. Now, if you're only worried about a printed book, hyperlinks really don't mean anything you know a hyperlink won't work on a printed book this is only if you're using a pdf or if, uh you set save it in like an epub format for like a tablet oh but like i said if you are working with uh um sending out like pdfs rather than the actual printed that can be handy And then you got the option of color coding where, uh, let's see, why don't I have that option there? No. Col color coding is as you got color coding set up in uh, Family Tree Maker, it will just display the dot you know, how you got the color coding for those people. So whether or not those dots appear or not, and they'll also show up, you know, 
up here in the books too. So, but you you got but that but that settings elsewhere. But you got that setting on the index of places and names as to whether or not you want that dot to appear. Um, and likewise, yeah, I didn't cover that on the in uh, in the introduction. Uh, you had the color coding legend. You got that option for a color coding legend. On your book, it will describe, oh, here's what these various colors mean. And it just takes those from your family tree maker. And it always prints them in this order. So red, orange, yellow, uh, green. It always prints them in this order of colors. And which is the same order as they are listed on Family Tree Maker. Um, yeah, I can't do it because Family Book Creator is running. Um, so that is by default how they will print out. So, and likewise, you do. There is a provision that if you don't like this, you can make your own. Uh, you can design your own custom. Uh, custom one you know like this you know so but anyway that was going back a little bit uh then the other option is just how many col columns you want one two or three uh so here's like the standard two column uh if you do one column you know it's just that you know one column if you do three columns It shows up like that, you know. So you can kind of decide how how you might want them. You know, I I tend to like the two column the two column format. Um, cause it, and it's all in an effort to save paper to you know because. These books can get quite lengthy. There's this one book I'm working on right now. It's about 900 some pages. And I want to use Lulu to print it. And Lulu has an 800 page limit. And I really don't want to split it. Uh, but anyway. Uh, so, but by adjusting these columns, that can actually save space especially over the one column and then i may even try the three column um so uh now in the index of places of course you got the option not to do an in uh, name index but here you basically got it where it's grouped by last name or the first letter of the name um here it's done just by the first letter of the name. So here the names are, you know, listed Carolyn Bissett, Jacqueline Bouvier. Uh, if you have it grouped by the actual last name, then I'll just say Bissett, then it does just list Carolyn, Jacqueline Lee, Bouvier, John Vern, you know. So that's what those two difference will give, whether it's just uh by the letter or by the last name. So, uh, and here you'd see Bessette and Bouvier split where uh, here they're together because they all start with B. So, uh, bu -bu now you can force the surnames to uppercase. Some people really like that surname to pop out. Um, And so that just, yeah, makes the surname all uppercase. And I just close those others, but um, um, alternate names. So if you have someone with multiple name facts, that this can be really handy if you've got, like, say, an immigrant ancestor that came over, you know, where they had, uh, 
you know, one name and, but then they decide to Americanize their name some. So you'd have a separate name fact. They can be listed under both of their names or three, depends upon how many name facts you've got for the person. Uh, so without alternate names, yeah, it's like that. Uh, Do the surname. Number. Oh, okay. Then. Okay. Oh, no. I've just. Okay. I, I just close out some of these. Uh. Okay. So. Um. You know. Here. Okay. This one has Jack. Okay. That that person was listed under uh, uh, in my tree. There was a separate name for John F. Kennedy as just Jack. Uh, I wouldn't have put it that way, but that that is what like the alternative name. So here he's listed here, and he's um, oops, yeah, nineteen seventeen to nineteen sixty three. So this John Fitzgerald and this Jack. Are the same person. Like I said, I wouldn't use that for nicknames. But uh, like I said, if you got an ancestor who, you know, they changed their names, this is a perfect way. So it's like some people may know them by first name, others by the other name. Uh, include married names for women now. Uh, Because uh, um, you'll see uh, Jacqueline uh, Lee Bouvier, here she is. But now here she is also under the Kennedy name because that's her married name. So, so basically, so a woman can be listed with her maiden name and her married name. Now, some of you may, may wonder, know Jacqueline Kennedy. Well, she was the only first la lady to ever remarry. She married uh, um, Onassis. Now, here she's not listed under the Onassis name because we're doing this book from the Kennedy line. So, uh, so that se second husband of Jack, Jack, Jackie Kennedy does not apply. Um. But now if we do it from her father's line, the Bouvier line, now Jackie, okay, here's Jackie under the Bouvier lane. Here Jackie is under the Kennedy. And now here Jackie is under the Onassis line. So she's married twice. So she's actually in this name in, index three times with her maiden name. Uh, her first husband's name and then her second husband's last name. So, so that can be handy uh, for uh, doing that. Um, include AKAs or nicknames. That's uh, if you'd want to include the AKA files or the surnames in this case. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so here's, uh, I moved that Jack to as an AKA. So here, ba basically, it's listing the AKA name, and then, but then in parentheses, it's like, oh, okay, this is John F. Kennedy. <laughs> so it's just if you'd want those AKAs just to be listed separate. Um, include names from family charts. Uh, th this would be... Uh, it would basic, basically include people that basically aren't in the book, but it, it would basically include these people, the, the parents and grandparents. Uh, e even though they their names are only listed here, 
they 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 would be in the name index. Um, even though um basically all you got is like a name and a lifespan for them. But with that, then th their names would be in there. So we got more names like Margaret Merritt, you know, which is, you know, here, you know, so she's only listed here. That's all that's mentioned of her, unless she'd be mentioned in a note or something. But that would include those people from there. Um, and likewise, include references to media elements. So if you got a person uh, attached to multiple people, basically all those people that's attached to would be listed in the name index, whether or not they're in the book or not. Um, if I was doing, say, a book, so, so if I was doing, say, a book of, say, on my mom's side, and there was a, uh, there was a picture of her with her cousin, say, from her father's side, all those people attached on her father's side would be in the name index. Uh, so it's like you, you, you'd potentially see people, it's like, well, why, why is this person in this book, you know? And there's no information other than a picture of them. So, but uh, if you would want to see any pictures where this person is attached to them, you don't. Know, so I could see pictures, say, of my mom attached to, you know, even if it is a cousin of hers on her mom's side, since that's the book. Uh, you could see anywhere in the book where there is a picture of her. So, and then likewise, we got the same thing with the hyperlinks. And then the color coding. So, so that's about it for the section. So, are there any questions? Yes, John. Um, when it came to the index, and you were showing um, Jackie's name, um, does it only increase the total of people in the index, or does it increase the total of people in the entire tree? No, it's when just the, it. it's just in the index because ba basically in in the index, someone can be listed more than once. It's the same person, but they're just listed more than once. Okay, so what is the difference when you were saying about not using? Probably wouldn't use it for nicknames and would use it for alternate. Is that just a preference, or is there some other advantage? It, it's it's just a preference. Okay. Uh, all alternate names is is any anywhere where where someone has more than one name fact, it will it will index them by all those different name facts. Uh, likewise, uh, if they've got an AKA fact, um, I'm not sure if you can have more than one AKA fact or not, but uh, it would basically list that. So I mean, however you use them in your book is how it will how it will appear you know if you use an aka as an alternate spelling of the name that's fine i mean okay uh, i okay because i do download from ancestry so um i think ancestry has aka so thank you yeah yeah any other questions yeah. Hey, John, when you create a family book and you save it, where does it normally get saved and what is the file extension? Uh, well, when you save it, it's, it's however you do save it. Uh, it will default to under preferences, you know, this file format. OK. But when you hit save, you know, here it's going to say, OK, here it pops up a dialog box and. Um, I, I've got, I, this isn't where I'd normally save a book, but then you can also specify, oh, hold it. I'm sorry. That was saving, that was savings. When you click create document. <clears throat> yeah, so this is the default. You can alter the name if you want, but then you can also specify the extension here. And like I said, if you don't want it, this is my default, my genealogy to do for where I, uh, save stuff but like i said you can you can just click or you know you can just go wherever you want with them you know 
I think you mentioned something <clears throat> about the advantage of saving as a <clears throat> excuse me as a PDF over others. <clears throat> Well, P PDF is, is if you're going to send this to someone to print, right, 99 times out of 100, they're going to want it in a PDF format. And and actually, and not just PDF, they're probably going to want this PDF slash A document format because that embeds all the fonts with it. Because you may have certain fonts that they may not have. So right. that's why. Uh, okay. If you want to do any editing, that say you absolutely like you can't, you can't fix it by cr fixing the data in Family Tree Maker or tweaking the settings in Family Book Creator. So it's something you you want to edit after the fact, then save it in like Word or Open Document, uh, depending upon what word processor you've got. Sure. Because from there, then you can say it once you've done all the edits, then you can update the tables. And um, it can, uh, it'll update all the table of contents, all those media references, all the indexes. Uh, open document, I don't think can handle the place index, but, um, but Word can, so. John? Yeah, Jean. How do I, I came in late and I'd like to know how I access the recordings that you create after the meeting. The how do I access them after the meeting? Well, the uh, they're on the YouTube channel uh, and oh. from the Family Book Creator groups go under the feature posts and there is a post here with this link. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, okay. They're also in the manual. Um, in the preference, it gives, well, where it gives the link to the family troop uh, group. It also has the link there too in the, in the user group or in the user guide. And likewise, when I do post it, uh, which will be within a couple hours, it will, uh, I'll say, here's recording three, here's the link to this one, and then I also include this link to the YouTube group, group channel itself. And then likewise, if you subscribe to it, then you can always, when you go to YouTube, you can always see, um, you know, you can click on your subscriptions, and you'll see just the videos from the, those uh ones that you've got a subscription to. And by subscription, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's just a way of flagging, okay, I, I like the, the this. I like uh, to follow these, these creators. And then, so you'll see just videos from just them, so. Thank you. Yeah. Well, if there's no more questions, I'll sign off and then uh, we'll see you uh, next week uh, where we're going to be covering um, what are we covering? Next week we're going to be covering uh Items to include, okay, so we're going to be covering yeah, we're going to be covering the uh, family chart and the photo album, so we're going to be covering this section right here and this section right here, and this one is there'll probably be a fair amount of discussion on it, I mean it's pretty straightforward to me, but this is in the group. I know we get a lot of questions about this section right here. So, um, and then the, then the following 
week after that, we're going to be covering these four, which also there's a fair amount of discussion about, you know, what you include on them, particularly between these two. So, but anyway, so I don't know if that's it. We'll uh, say goodbye and I'll see you next week. So, cheers, everyone. <laughs>